Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli, the computer guy, here for The Daily Blob, where I shake my brain nipples every day to get some of that dirty, dirty YouTube money so I can afford to provide you folks hands-on, in-person technology education that empowers you to do what you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. Silicon Dojo, SiliconDojo.com. We have a class coming up on AI and web scraping tomorrow. Completely full. Don't try to sign up for that one. But we do have a class coming up on extending AI capabilities uh, with REST APIs. That's going to be coming up in a couple weeks. We're going to have more classes uh, going on in the future. If you're interested, take a look at the schedule at SiliconDojo.com. Do remember, free the user is not actually free. That's why I shake the brain nip nips every day. If you want to throw some money into the donor box link down below, uh, that would be ever so lovely. And with that, and with that, oh, you know how I say, don't be racist, but if you're going to be racist, at least be effective. Oh, Lordy, I'm starting, I'm starting, I'm starting to miss the Nazis in a way. That's horrible to say. Oh, I shouldn't say it. I will. You know, you know the thing about the Nazis? You know the thing about the Nazis? Nobody ever says the Nazis didn't try. <laughs> Nobody ever says, like, well, the Nazis were ineffective at what they were doing. They were complete and utter bastards that should have been burned alive. But, you know, they had a belief system and they, they went for that 110%. And the thing that I say about that is it's very weird in the United States right now because, because basically we have, we have like the Gen Z version of the Nazis. <laughs> like what if they were Nazis? <laughs> they just weren't very competent at it. It's like the worst of all words, worlds. They are Nazis. They're just incompetent Nazis. Fuck me. So anyways, as I've talked about with the whole U.S., idiocy as far as China is concerned is we have this whole containment policy towards China, right? Under the Obama administration, the, the Pacific Pivot, Trans-Pacific Partnership, under, uh, under uh, Biden, we have the whole um, AI diffusion rules, trying to keep them from getting artificial intelligence. And one of the big things that I come up to when I talk about all this kind of stuff is just, just how, how horribly ineffective it is. Like not, not only is it bad policy, let me be just crystal clear, bad fucking policy from the jump, but beyond that, it's also, it's just, it's not how technology works. It's like not how the world works, right? You know, if you saw this under the Biden administration with the AI diffusion rule, there is one, there is one point they were, they're, they're debating putting export controls on models, models. The Biden administration literally took seriously the idea of putting export restrictions on open source LLM models because apparently motherfucker wasn't awake when Napster happened. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we're going to we're going to put rules to say people can't share files on the internet. Oh fuck, grandpa. <laughs> How much longer are you going to be alive? Fuck, you're already dead? Shit. Anyways, right? But anyways, I think that's one of the big problems we have right now with all this, this AI idiocy, right? We have this with the Trump administration trying to do the export controls and all that kind of stuff. But again, as I've talked about before, this is not, this is not really how technology works, right? There's a way that technology works. If you are going to try to restrict access you can do it, but you got to think about how things actually function. And so I think that's interesting right now with this story. So we have these export controls uh, for China. So basically, again, China man bad. Remember, you always got to remember China man bad. Uh, so they can't get GPUs. Uh, you, you know what they can do? Uh, they, they, they can help fund companies that are outside of China and then use those companies' resources. Yep. So, you know, as I say, in technology, it always comes back to architecture. Architecture, 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 architecture. Yeah. So anyways, this is curious. This is coming from Tom's Hardware. A Chinese AI startup gets access to 2300 banned Blackwell GPUs by exploiting cloud loophole. Rinse compute from Indonesian firm with 32 NVIDIA GP200 uh, server racks. So basically, the Indi Indonesian company uh, purchased these NVIDIA server racks. Again, one server rack has many, many servers in them. Uh, bought them, basically uh, has them for rent, has them for lease or whatever, right? Basically like Amazon or whatever else. And so the Chinese company is simply using 
using the servers that are in Indonesia instead of in China. 2025, the year, the year I've said so many things I never thought I would say. Ah, I never thought I'd say I miss Nazis. I miss Nazis. Can we just, can we just go back to Sandy? Anyways, even though U.S. Presidential, President Trump, uh, Donald Trump says that NVIDIA's latest Blackwell chips will not be sold to China, Chinese companies still find ways to legally get access to NVIDIA's latest GPUs. According to an investigation by the Wall Street Journal, INF Tech, a Shanghai-based startup developing AI for finance and health applications, gained access to 2,300 banned NVIDIA AI GPUs operated by a company in Jakarta, Indonesia. This move may seem illegal, especially amid all the rhetoric from Washington, D.C. and Beijing, but lawyers say it's completely legal. Yay! As I've said, as I've said many times, if you really, if you really want to be on the cusp of innovation in the technology world for about the next 20 years, get your MBA or your Juris Doctor. That's where the interesting innovation is occurring. An Indonesian telecommunications company, Indostat, or, or a do? Uh, Hutchinson acquired 32 NVIDIA GB200 server racks from Averis, with each rack containing 72 Blackwell chips. This amounts to 2,304 GPUs. This is a massive deal for the Indonesian company, amounting to about $100 million. Indostat did not buy the GPUs without first securing a customer. So that was very good of them. <laughs> Before they bought all these GPUs, they secured a customer. According to the Wall Street Journal, sources say Averis found a client for the Indonesian telco first with INF Tech. This startup was founded by uh, Kui Wan, a Chinese-born American citizen who also heads the AI Institute at Fudan University. It was even said that the university had representatives during the negotiation between INF Tech and Indostat, although INF Tech has the sig uh, was the signatory of the contract. With the contract signed, Indostat proceeded with the purchase, with the servers being installed at its site in Jakarta as of as of October 2025. Given that Indostat, INF Tech, and even Fudan University aren't included in U.S. entities list, the deal seems to be above board. However, this will definitely raise some eyebrows, especially among those opposed to Chinese companies gaining access to American hardware. After all, they say that even though the Chinese companies may not work with the CCP and its military right now, Beijing can compel any corporation to cooperate with the state. INF told the Wall Street Journal that it does not do any research with military applications and that it com uh, complies with U.S. export controls. The publication also reached out to Indostat, asking whether it had been approached by Chinese customers, to which its chief executive said it works with multinational companies, quote, any customer that is outside Indonesia goes through the same regulation, whether it is a U.S. company or a China company, says uh, the CEO. Uh, if it, it clears all regulations, we support it. Uh, so yeah, so basically... There you go. If you can't get your hands on a rack of NVIDIA servers, you simply become the first customer for a company that can get their hands on multiple racks of NVIDIA servers. And there, there you go. And so the idiocy continues. And so the idiocy continues and we will see, again, we will see how this goes at the end of the day. That's one thing that I find fascinating with this whole AI, again, the whole AI diffusion rule and the whole AI export controls as far as the United States is concerned with China is basically the whole question of can you architect around it? Can you design systems around it? So like here in the United States, they're passing all of these anti-porn laws that basically you're supposed to hand over your government ID if you wanna look at porn in the US. So basically, uh, the way to get around that if you don't wanna hand over your ID is to think about architecture. And so you simply use a VPN service. You bounce your computer through a VPN to get somewhere else, right? That is, that is a very basic level of, of architecting. And that's one of the questions I have with trying to prevent uh, China from, from um, you know, improving in the AI quote unquote arms race is the whole question of simply can they architect around it? Right, that's the idea. Like even, even if Huawei's AI chips theoretically are, are half the power 
of the uh, of Nvidia's chips, right? Can you can you just simply cluster more of them together uh, at the end of the day to get the same performance? Right. If China has to connect an entire coal coal power plant uh, to run their AI clusters, they probably don't care. Right. As long as they get the performance that, that they need. Uh, the other thing, again, to be thinking about with architecting is that training model training models uh, requires the most resources. Uh, actually, running uh, models inference uh, requires very few resources. So even if you had, if even if they had big models that they wanted to train on Nvidia for some reason. Can they simply can they simply exfiltrate out the data somewhere else, do the training on somebody else's systems, bring the model back, and then just run the models inside of China? Right? We saw this before. I did an article talking about where. Uh, Oh, there are these Chinese folks that literally, they took like 32 hard drives or 30 hard drives. It was like 30 hard drives of data. They hopped on a plane. I think they might have gone to Indonesia too or Malaysia. Anyways, they hopped on a plane. They went to a different country. They plugged the hard drives into the infrastructure. They trained the model using those people's hardware. They got the model back. They hopped on the airplane and they went back home, right? Again, sneak, sneaker net the AI world. It's no longer sneaker net. It's like Jeep net or something in order to take all the, uh, the stuff. And again, it's that, it's that very curious question of, you know, can, can policy keep up with architecture? And at what point does all of this just, just become a fucking sad ass joke? Um, is the question, is the question that I have. So what do you think about this? What do you think about a Chinese AI startup essentially guaranteeing revenue for an Indonesian company. So that Indonesian company can go out and buy 32 racks of uh, NVIDIA servers. And uh, it seems to be all above board. Do you, do, do you think this is the plan that either Biden or Trump was imagining uh, way back when, when all this dipshittery started? Um, how, do you, how do you feel about all of this? How do you feel about Oh God, it's only gonna get worse. You know, 2026 is gonna be worse. You, you know, you know, you know, you are going to, you are going to look back on 2025 and you're gonna be like, I miss, I miss the sunny days of 2025. I don't know, put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate them, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a dumbass. Just be a real Lutnik. Put that strong American comment down there. Uh, and with that, do remember what I actually care about is Silicon Dojo. Uh, what is it? Authorityless, gatekeeperless, free to the end user, hands on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. We're having a class on AI and web scraping coming up next week. Or no, coming up a couple of days. I'm tired. This is the last one we're doing today. Oh, and then I got to drive to Durham. And then I got to go to a different meetup. It's so long. What day? What time is it? Fuck. It's like 9.30. <laughs> It's like 9 30 in the morning i'm finishing up this set of videos and then i gotta pack i got everything ready for the class tomorrow then i gotta drive three and a half hours to durham then i gotta go get my new office i'm getting my new office getting my new office in american underground i gotta move into that and then i gotta go to the there's a there's a meetup uh all things open great group they're having their meetup at the cisco campus in durham so then i gotta go to that Oh, fuck. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day. So anyways, what was I saying? I don't know. Something about SiliconDojo.com. If you're interested in uh, tech classes, uh, go to SiliconDojo.com to see what our schedule is. Do you remember free to the end user? It's not actually free. Gas costs money. Toner? Oh, my fucking Christ. Do you know how much toner costs nowadays? Fuck not. Fuck not. Anyways, toner costs money. Lots of stuff costs money. So if you'd like to help support Silicon Dojo, there's a toner box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.